If you died and found yourself trapped in a terrifying alien death game, what would you do? The fate of the world rests in your hands, and everything in this city is out to brutally tear you apart. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the Gantz death games in Gantz O. This guy Kato here is on his way home to surprise his little brother with a birthday cake. Out of nowhere, he sees crowds of people sprinting towards him trying to get away from this old man crawling on the floor covered in blood. He decides to run over and help the man out. Out. But that's when he notices a masked man approaching him with a knife. Okay, one second, I'm off getting a cake from my little brother. And the next thing, I'm being attacked by a psycho with a knife. What Japan's next top model Kato did here is more dumb than Dom trying to buy a dive watch. When Al and I know that Dom can't even swim. Rushing in first thing is the worst thing that you could do. What I would do is first assess the situation, keeping my distance. I'll walk to the left side and right side with the subway platform. I'm not going to walk over there to get stabbed by a psycho who could easily be hiding behind this divider. Which he was hiding behind after making sure I think the coast is clear. Then and only then will I walk over to see if the old guy is dead or not. If he's dead, great, I can move on with my day. If not, then we'll decide if we'll be a good guy and help him out. But Kato didn't do this, and now we're stuck trying to save ourselves, all for trying to be the hero. Now that I have this guy coming towards me, we have to move quickly. I'm immediately going to back away and gain some distance. If I have a clear line of sight to the stairs up and out of the subway, I'm taking it and getting out of dodge. If I don't, then I'm going to again keep my distance and quickly back away from the psycho with a knife and flip around my backpack to the front and on my chest putting my arms through the straps. All the stuff that is in my backpack is going to slow down the knife and hopefully protect my vital organs. This killer coming to attack me now attacked that old dude in broad daylight and clearly didn't care about any of the cameras that I'm sure are scattered around all over the place and it's likely that we won't be able to talk this guy out of it. If we can't run away we're going to have to defend ourselves by putting our backpack in front of us and using our little brother's gift as a weapon for self-defense. Sorry little brother. I'm sure he'll get over it once I tell him I used his cake to save my life. Unable to defend himself, the masked killer quickly overpowers Kato and violently stabs him to death. But just then, he wakes back up in an empty apartment room with no memory of how he got there. But this isn't hell, oh, <laughs> it's so much worse. Kato notices a strange black sphere across the room, and he meets other people just like him. He finds out that everyone here also died in various ways before being brought back to life and ended up in this room with no explanation given. No explanation except one. This old man tells him that everyone here has been forced to participate in endless death games, fighting for their lives until they manage to free themselves from this responsibility or die trying. Kato thinks this is all some sick joke, but has no idea just how dangerous this game he's just entered is. Out of nowhere, a scary children's song begins playing from the Black Sphere. Playing a message for everyone on the screen, the Black Sphere declares that everyone's old lives have now ended, and that it will decide how to use their new lives, and it gives everyone their next kill target. They must complete their mission before their time runs out. Kato is too horrified to think, just as he discovers that the mysterious sphere is called Gantz, and they reveal to him something horrifying. They tell him that Japan has recently been invaded by aliens from an unknown origin, and people like Kato, on the verge of death, have been tasked with stopping these aliens no matter what it takes. In countless death games, they cannot escape, they cannot run, they can only fight. Gantz then opens up and displays their weapons and their combat-ready body armor, but sunglasses got here has had enough of this BDSM bull crap and tries to leave the locked room. But that's when this guy puts a big fatty right through his gray matter, blowing him up and terrifying the rest of the group. Okay, one second ago, Kato was off getting a birthday cake for his little brother, and then died and is now somehow in a horrifying twisted death game. And his teammates like this kid here just showed us that not only does he think that he's the top dog of this group, and clearly doesn't give two shits about keeping any of us alive. What I would do if I was Kato would be to first assess the area they are in, and see if we are truly trapped inside this apartment. Because if that is the case, that makes the people that I'm stuck with in this room all the more important. Arming ourselves is obvious, but we'll do little in the long run if Kato here doesn't try to improve the team's dynamics. What this kid did to Sunglasses Guy and the reaction that the old man and this girl gave in response to that terrifying incident makes it clear that this group doesn't share any factors that would contribute to good team dynamics. Which if we assessed everybody as a group right now, none of them are demonstrating the five variables that would contribute to a more effective group dynamic. To survive right now, Kato needs to be ruthless. And this means that unlike this kid, Kato needs to know when to control his emotions. And this means playing nice with everyone by bringing this group together. Since this is a death game, establishing a compelling direction to drive the team towards, like focusing on hunting down their target objective, helping to motivate everyone here to focus on the goal in order to win the game. Because while I won't risk my life for these strangers when the time comes, creating a sense of team spirit within the group will help me to survive in the long run, and will be the most important thing Kato here should do if 
he wants to escape this nightmare alive. This murderer freak introduces himself as Nishi, but we'll call him Creepy Face. And everyone tells him that they don't have time to mess around. Old man and lady hair products tell Kato to quickly put on his bodysuit armor, as the show is about to begin. Everyone begins teleporting to their next death game location. Arriving at their new arena, the gang becomes shocked when they realize that they've just been transported to Osaka, different from all their previous death games set in Tokyo, and they're terrified as hell. Out of nowhere, they get an alert on their digital map that something horrifying is headed their way. Readying their guns, they see something sinister approaching. Kato begins sweating bullets as these two lock onto their incoming target but fail to make a direct hit. Okay, this is horrible. Not only can we be brought back from the dead, but now we're taking orders from this magic aid ball that has the power to manipulate time and space. And these two old man and lady hair products are useless when it comes to actual combat. With the exception of creepy Nishi over here, but he's batshit crazy anyways. Which means we can't rely on him to do anything that he doesn't want to do. While I would love to run away, I know that's a mistake. Because with the level of technology that Gantz has, I wouldn't be surprised if these suits have built-in trackers, which means any attempt to flee would be pointless and would probably get me killed. The only one on our group that looks competent and knows what they're doing is creepy face Nishi over here. I would make nice with this guy as soon as possible, but through respect and admiration and not by ass kissing. Because if that happens, he might end up like Channing Tatum that one time when hell froze over. Ugh. Since we can't run away, I would two birds one stone this situation by sticking with this group but also establish a hierarchy within the group. This terrifying alien that came running towards us is the exact reason why Kato should order his group to get to high ground for a better vantage point over the area and to gain some distance from any stragglers that could pop up near us, since we are currently located in a classic narrow Japanese street, which means we gotta get out of here as soon as possible. If we look closely, there is an open garage door located here, right when the gang first teleported in, which seems to be an automatic garage door as well. Now, in the event of an emergency within the city, on the off chance certain areas of the city would not have power, it's known that most garage doors have a manual release to control the door and to open and close it, which means we'll be able to do it ourselves in the event there is no power to it. We'll be able to withstand whatever attacks this abomination throws at it. Doing this, we will be able to then kill the creature and also stay safe and plan our next move. Nishi saves everyone and kills this alien right in front of Kato. Freaking out, he demands that someone tell him what's really going on, and old man fills him in on the official rules of Gantz. They must survive and kill all the aliens before the timer runs out, but if they die in-game, they'll be dead for real. That's when they get alerted that a horde of aliens and monsters are headed right for them. Getting spotted, they run for their lives, but Nishi and Old Man quickly get pinned down as Kato tries to help them. Firing his weapon, he realizes in horror that he can't kill it, and gets crushed by the giant monster head, but he finds out that his bodysuit armor can handle more than he thought. The group gets surrounded and prepares to die, just as they get saved by another group of Gantz players. They are the Osaka team, veteran players and among the best in the game. They quickly make fun of Kato's team's suckiness as weaklings, and Kato's group is forced to watch as the Osaka studs kick ass and take names, wiping out this entire alien horde in a matter of minutes. While this team is incredibly skilled, they're also very cocky. Old Man then informs Kato of something that will soon change his life, and tells him that if you score 100 points in Gantz, you get access to one out of three amazing rewards. 1. Unlock better weapons. 2. Resurrect a dead teammate. Or 3. Have your memory wiped and become free from this alien death game. Okay, this is new information and great news. We now have a way to get out of this hell. Kato here has just discovered new memories members of Gantz and ones that are much better than Kato's group. These Osaka studs are basically adrenaline junkies and megalomaniacs married to the game and chose not to leave. And that means that our problems just got a whole lot easier if Kato plays his cards right. We know by now that his team is useless. Old man and lady hair products Reika over here, while sweet, are better used as meat shields than they are Gantz players. They played this game before, and yet somehow they still don't realize that their guns have crap range. And creepy face Nishi, while good as a player, is batshit crazy more sour looking than a chunky grumpy cat. Kato is better off connecting with Team Osaka for now. It's clear that they think his team is pathetic, which means if I was him, I would keep my mouth shut and let these tryhard wannabes do what they want to do and show off. I want to survive and I'm more than happy to ask to join their team and be at the bottom of the totem pole for now. But I would do this with a purpose in mind, by letting them take over. We'll be able to let them rack up kills and do some of the heavy lifting for us while we could try to rack up the easier targets, collecting up points in the process. It would also benefit Kato if he tried to get on the good side of this bald batty head honcho over here, as he could provide us with more information about this game, while still racking up easier kills and gaining points, and even maybe allow us to swipe any loot that these more experienced players happen to drop should they get injured or <laughs> killed. Because gaining points, better weaponry, and surviving and getting overall stronger in this game is the only way out of this. Kato is shocked at what Old Man tells him about the game. He mentions that since the Osaka team is now here, they can just wait out this round of the game, and 
and leave the killing to the professionals. Creepy face Nishi ignores this and leaves the group to go find the final boss of this level worth 100 points, but he has no idea just how hard that will be to accomplish. Kato then notices some innocent civilians getting hunted down by more alien monsters. Old man tells him that they should ignore them and focus on surviving, but Kato's hero attitude disagrees with him, and he declares that while he's alive, he'll try to save as many innocent people as he can. Old man then gives Kato some coins and tells him to go call his family in case something happens to him. Kato then parts ways with the old man, not realizing that a mysterious woman is spying on him. Kato reaches a payphone booth and calls his little brother, making up some excuse about where he's been, and tells him that he'll be home soon, but then he sees some innocent people get terrorized by this monster. Kato quickly rushes over to help them, but just as quickly gets disarmed by the terrifying monster. He tries his best to outsmart the alien and barely manages to get away with his life. The mysterious girl then approaches Kato and introduces herself as Anzu. She tells him that she's been watching him and warns him that playing the hero card will soon get him killed. But Kato refuses to listen, fascinated by his good heart. She guides him to another group of trapped people nearby, and they stumble across this horrifying monster. Okay, I just learned three very important things. One, we can get out of here. Two, my team sucks. And three, it's clear that Kato has the most pure heart and is more adorable than a Scottish fold on the internet. And this means that this guy will likely not stop being a good person until the day he dies or somehow defeats the game. Oh, I love this guy, but he's stupid. And given how stupid he is, the first option is more likely. Again, he decided to risk his life for some more old people, which makes total sense. But given his determination and stubbornness, taking down this monster seems to be the move here. After all, he does need more Gantz points if he wants to have any shot of escaping this hell hole. But before he goes in like a regular white knight, unlike before, he needs to take into account what he's actually up against. The thing this idiot is looking to take on looks like the supersized version of a gorilla with a sword at the end of its tail, and it is not focused on us. I'm taking Anzu with me and we're going to run down on the opposite side of the street and get as close as we can to the monster. Then once we're in position, we're going to run up alongside it, and as soon as I see its neck, I'm going to unload my clip into the thing. Once it turns its face, I'm having Anzu fire her shot and we're going to sprint away like hell. Freaky Freaky King Kong over there has no idea that me and Anzu are even watching it, which means we should utilize this opportunity to its fullest. Now does that put the old people in danger? Yes, absolutely. But if they're going to survive, they're going to survive according to my timeline. I'm not going to rush my plan to die for them. Kato shocks Anzu by running into battle this terrifying alien without a second thought. Stunned by his good boy act and terrified, she abandons him in frustration, leaving Kato to fight this thing solo. Sliding in, he tries to distract the monster, but quickly gets his weapon destroyed, shocked and now out of moves. He desperately tries to think of what to do, just as Anzu returns at the last minute, saving him. She gets the monster's attention, and Kato uses this moment to spear its eye and quickly retrieves Anzu's dropped weapon, killing the alien once and for all and saving the day. He rushes over to see if Anzu is all right, and she quickly falls for him hashtag classic anime style. The two then obviously agree to work together and try to save as many innocent people as they can. Meanwhile, Reika and Old Man try to survive the night when they come across a terrifying battle between two giants. Kato and Anzu finally catch up with them, but then they get surrounded by the military. Injuring Old Man, they demand to know who they are, but out of nowhere a hideous monster runs into them and rips the flesh out of the entire military unit. Anzu and Kato quickly work together to take it out, but this demon is tough as hell. And quickly manages to break free, just as the Osaka studs show up to try to save the day. This guy starts crushing the beast with a gravity gun, but quickly realizes that this is not like the rest of the aliens they've killed. It somehow doesn't die and gets a hold of him, and the man starts begging his friend to help him out, but Captain Oblivious over there thinks everything is fine. Baldy headman Honcho uses the gun in his hand and desperately fires off rounds into the thing's face. Everyone thinks the battle is won, but the man then realizes that everything is not fine and that his friend is dead. Out of nowhere, they see a creature slowly and calmly walk towards him. The remaining Osaka stud tries to attack him, but it dodges every attack with ease. He tries to grab the alien, but that's when things begin to get a little bit naughty, and it shapeshifts into a rather questionable anime character, and it swallows him whole. Okay, this is insane. Kato's team right now has just come across the boss that Gantz put on their kill list. This is Narachion, worth 100 points. Killing this thing means that anyone here instantly unlocks the best rewards in the game as soon as it's over. But we all know it's not going to be that easy. This creature, as we've seen, has the power to transform rapidly, capable of turning into crazy things and beastly forms. Its shape-shifting ability also means that this thing has the ability to regenerate. However, there is one thing that makes me suspect that based on what we saw of this alien, that we may be able to defeat it. It's noted that the samurai Osaka stud gave everything he got to try and kill this alien, yet couldn't. It's almost as if this alien predicted his moves from before he even made them, or was able to see them in slow motion. Hear me out now. Because this monster's reflexes are similar 
similar in speed and efficiency to that of a housefly, which is a pesky little bug that has no problems avoiding getting swatted. And the reason why they're so efficient at this is due to their superior vision. They have up to 6,000 mini lenses on each eye. Flies have some of the fastest vision on Earth and can literally see a hand coming at them in slow motion, just like this guy. Which means attacking this thing up close and personal is not the thing to do. I'm pretty certain that ranged attacks would work better. If I was in charge, I would set up our best sharpshooters here to set up a hide site somewhere way back. This creature doesn't seem to be as aggressive as of now, and its movement pace is rather slow and obvious. This means that once our people are in place, I'm going to use one or two of Kato's team members to lure the creature into our kill zone, where our snipers would have a clear shot of taking this thing out. A long range attack is our best bet in being able to kill this thing, but we don't know for sure if this will work. This is our best bet as of now in trying to take this thing out, winning 100 points, and finally getting out of dodge. Kato mans up and fires round after round, but it's no use. His teammates join in on the fight, but they're royally screwed, and Kato gets caught, and is about to die when he gets saved by creepy Nishi hiding in plain sight. Everyone here thinks the worst is over, but the horrors have only just begun. Suddenly, a new creature rises from the pool of blood, one that no one has ever seen before. Standing tall over these mortals, it critically injures creepy Nishi in seconds and forces everyone to run. Coming across the two same giants from earlier, the battle continues, and then they all see the game's greatest player step out of his giant mecha suit, killing the giant minotaur alien once and for all, Oka, the veteran player and the best within the game, and he makes his way over to the monster that killed Team Osaka. Kato and his crew watch as the two battle it out. Oka uses all of his skills, tech, and weaponry and finally beats this thing down, or so he thinks. To his surprise, another creature rises from the smoke, more devastating than anything anyone has ever seen before. Oka knows this one is different. He tries to attack it, but it regenerates in seconds and quickly overpowers him, almost killing him. But suddenly, Oka abandons his suit, coming up from behind, slicing this monster in half. Kato thinks it's over. But while walking away, Oka tells him that this creature will soon come back and that he doesn't have the firepower right now to kill it. So he leaves the group to go and resupply. But dumber than a box of rocks, Kato thinks that he can finish the job here and now, and he walks over to kill it. Suddenly, an explosive device bursts up into the air, and Old Man quickly saves Kato. Everyone is forced to watch the final transformation of this monster, this horrifying skeleton-looking thing. They cower in fear, and Kato tries to attack it, but easily gets knocked back. His suit finally breaks, and he lays helpless in front of this alien. And it asks him, where is the other one? He was fun to play with. And it tells him that it'll come back for him. And it flies off. The girls approach Kato and quickly tell him that they all need to run. But Kato somehow convinces them that they must stop this thing, win the game, and finally make it back to his kid brother, no matter what it takes. And he convinces them to help him come up with a plan to kill this thing. Okay, this is suicidal. You wanna go die? Go right ahead. I gotta get back home, man. No way am I going to try to fight what the strongest player couldn't kill. If memory serves me right, the rules of the game are, if you can stay alive by the time the timer runs out, regardless of injury and how bad you're hurt, you will recover. Hachiro Oka won the game seven times, which means this thing can be killed, but the odds of us pulling this off are astronomically low. This is so insane. The monster they just met is the same one, Narahyon, the boss of this round, and now he's shapeshifted into the most terrifying creature they've ever seen. This thing is not only dangerous as hell, I'm done letting the lovable idiot Kato tell us what we should do. I'm taking over now. This is what we're going to do. Last we checked, these guys had about an hour left on the Gantz clock, and now surely they have less than 20 minutes until the game ends, which means they only need to stay alive for 20 more minutes. Now, while retreating does seem like a cop-out move, doing so in this situation would in actuality be their best bet, since this creature isn't after us for now, and now we're so close to ending the game. And what we've seen from the invaluable moment of watching Oka and Rahion fight, we can now say with almost absolute certainty, the only way to take this thing out is by long-range attacks. Both the Osaka studs and Oka tried to attack this thing head-on and failed. Once the timer runs out and we get back to Gantz, I'm going to immediately start investing in whatever points that we have earned into getting better gear and weapons, and particularly making sure that we get better long-range weaponry in preparation for the next round of the game, in order to come back better prepared against this alien, who will surely be still around terrorizing the city. Kato's team prepares a kill zone just as the monster shows back up, now holding the head of the game's former greatest player. Horrified with no position just yet, this monster marks Kato for dead, and the girls quickly try to snipe it from a distance. They quickly take pot shots and soon overwhelm the creature, panicking. It begins blasting beams of energy everywhere, and Kato tries to surprise attack it, but gets blown back. Anzo reacts to this in horror, and yells out to her crush, giving away her position, and the alien fires at her, barely clinging onto the building. Reika tries to continue firing, and Kato tries to get to his weapon, but then he gets spotted. The monster prepares to kill him right here and now, but Anzu out of nowhere sacrifices her life, and she gets brutally sliced in half in front of Kato. Creepy Nishi then rides up and crashes his vehicle at the monster, giving Kato enough time to take the final kill shot, destroying the boss once and for 
overall and ending the game. With his legs blown off, Kato embraces his forced upon short term girlfriend, holding her corpse, and everyone gets beamed back into the Gantz room. Now regenerated and good as new, everyone looks to Gantz as it finally scores everyone's points. Reika, 6 points. Old Man, 2 points. Creepy Face, 12 points. And Kato, 100 points. Everyone is shocked, and Gantz offers Kato three options that he can pick as his reward. 1. New weapons. 2. The resurrection of a dead player. 3. Freedom. At the cost of having his memory wiped. So, Kato thinks about his little brother and decides to make the hardest decision that he's ever had to make. And the rest of the crew thanks him for his service. Except Nishi, but we don't really care about him. Happy, Kato bids these two farewell and tells them that he'll see them at the next death game. Not realizing that, by the way, he's played this game before and had already long ago fought with all of them before in countless death games. He willingly chose to have his memory wiped. They all chose to keep their mouth shut. Because if they had told him, then he would have never left. He would have kept trying to play the Gantz games until he revived every single one of his still dead former teammates. So they decided to be nice and spare him from knowing that. Making playing Gantz the ultimate excuse for wannabe deadbeat family members. And if you don't want to be no deadbeat dad, then like, comment, let us know what you liked. And of course, didn't like it, don't forget to check out the Hollywood playlist down below.